Well, I'm really enjoying Nelicky's class this week. It's been really fun. She's so uh, funny and interesting, and all the different ex sort of different techniques that she's using are very inspiring. And you know, they just make me want to try all different kinds of things to step out of my comfort zone and to to play, as she suggests. So uh, I'm going to get to work and start making some faces. I don't have any magazines at home, but I have a big collection of these ancient yearbooks. I've bought them at flea markets over the years. And what I love about them is that you have all these different faces. People try to look their best for their pictures, you know, and they're different eras, but they're all kind of posed in the same way. And they're great for drawing and for just studying characters and faces. If you ever come across one of these things in a flea market or, or an attic, pull them out and try drawing some of these faces inside. They're really really very cool and, and sweet and evocative of other times. Another cool resource are old mug shots. This is a big book full of all different kinds of ones. And I love these pictures because they capture, you know, this kind of moment of uh, these real types, criminals with, who have been busted goons and thugs. And you can find these kind of pictures on the internet if you just Google mug shots. And so I'm gonna Xerox a few pages out of those, that book and uh, we'll have some faces that we can work with. This is a moleskin that I've filled just with these kinds of drawings of uh, corporate executives, criminals, yearbook dudes, thugs of different kinds, and uh, I do watercolors and study them, monkeys even. This is a project I began called Men in White Shirts. It's an entire book full of, well, drawings of men in white shirts, different kinds. And, and I try to vary my style and the techniques that I use in every one. It's sort of a place to experiment, to try stuff out and uh, to fool around. And so I think that Nelicky's assignment will be a really great way to extend this. So I think I'm going to combine my drawings of goons from mugshots with this project of men in white shirts on gray paper, drawn with black lines. It's fun to have a project like this. Just kind of come back to it. I mean, I never spend more than like a few minutes doing any one of these, and some of them are from my imagination, from magazines, from pictures on the internet, whatever. There's uh, endless resources to draw on and to just see, you know, where you go with it. So let's start. So I'm going to start with this criminal dude from Davenport, Iowa, and. Um, I start by just drawing a kind of a general contour of the outer edges of his head and his hat and stuff like that uh, with a big fat marker. And now his eyes, you know, they have that criminal hooded look, a little bit of a nose, a stash, all important, his shirt and a tie, of course. And um, now I go in with a finer pen and I'm just adding some shading or some texture, a little bit of cro of hatching to uh, give him some dimension and uh, tightening things up. And now I take out my Bombay white ink. I love to use white ink against uh, tonal paper. And I'm just using a regular watercolor brush. It's, it's water-based, this ink. And I'm also, of course, doing the shirt. And now the irises and the, the whites of his eyes to just uh, make him pop a little bit. And I'm going to add a little feather to his cap. Why not? Just uh, give him a bit of panache and some highlights. And now I'm going to paint in the background. I just want to make him stand out from the background by slathering on some white paint. And because I slathered, I now go back in with my pen and just fill in the details that I obscured with my white paint. All right, looking sharp. It's criminal dude number one. With this next guy, I'm going to try the collage technique that Nelicky uses, but my own version of that. Here's another criminal dude. I'm going to cut his face right in half and I'm going to take the top half, put it on my page, and now I'm going to use that as inspiration to draw the rest of him. What does he look like now that I've lost the bottom part of his face? Some lips, a big lantern jaw. Of course he's a criminal so you know he's going to need a little cleft in his chin and some big hulking shoulders and of course Five o'clock shadow, draw that in, a little pencil line mustache, a bow tie, why not? Mix things up a bit. And, uh, you know, one of those old 
kinds of suits with wide lapels, pinstripes, of course, and uh, a snazzy waistcoat, checkers, and uh, let's, uh, let's color in that bow tie. All right now, I'm going to take that away, and now I'm going to draw the rest of him using the bottom part as inspiration. Nice cauliflower ear, and uh, a little bit thinning on top, but of course he has those super cool sideburns, and I'm going to give him some glasses to make him look a bit more forbidding. Some hairy eyebrows, a thin, evil-looking nose, and I'm going to give him dark glasses because that makes him more inscrutable and threatening-looking. And um, now, of course, the old Bombay white ink. Got to give him the white shirt. And I'm also going to put some highlights on those glasses to show them reflecting. And, of course, his nose. And uh, it's all right. There he is. Super cool, scary-looking, thuggish dude number two. Well, this is just the beginning of the week. You know, I plan to keep drawing, keep making faces all week long, as Nelicky suggests, and to fill up my book with all kinds of fun stuff. Hope you are too.